their families survive. And when there is a climate crisis, the crops fail and women sometimes have to walk for days to find water and wood if they ever even find them. Women's work becomes so much harder in the face of climate crisis. And did you know that women make up 80% of climate refugees, people who are displaced because of the climate crisis? And yet women are usually the last to be rescued when there is extreme climate events. Research shows that there are significant increases in rape, sexual assault, and domestic violence in places experiencing climate-related disasters like floods or earthquakes or fracking or mining. When oil pipelines and other fossil fuel projects are under construction, it brings in an influx of thousands of men into rural areas and on indigenous reservations where they live in man camps. In the tar sands of Alberta, Canada, and in the Balkan oil fields of the Great Lake regions, there's been a surge in violent crimes and aggravated sexual assault. North Dakota has at least 125 cases of missing native women, although the numbers are probably a lot higher, but we don't keep any official records of missing and murdered indigenous women, and that has to change. We cannot ignore the connection of oil extraction and pipeline construction to growing numbers of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. But women lead the way to climate solutions. In the developing world, it's women who are the early adopters of new agricultural techniques. In the face of climate-related disasters, it's women who are the effective community organizers and caregivers. Women tend to be the entrepreneurs of green energy and the decision makers at home. And for all these reasons and more, women offer valuable insights and solutions into better managing the risks of climate change. And in the United States, from Alaska to Louisiana to Standing Rock, women are piloting community-based clean energy programs and sustainable disaster response efforts. And did you know that the countries with higher female parliamentary representation are more prone to ratify international environmental treaties? <laughs> Tells us something about how we should vote. <laughs> Yet women's contributions are often overlooked in humanitarian and climate actions and their practical needs are often forgotten, and this must change. I want to bring two women up who are my climate buddies. These are the women I was with in Big Sur over the Labor Day weekend when I made the decision to move to D.C. Rosanna Arquette has acted since she was a young girl in many films and TV shows, but she's particularly proud of her offbeat roles in independent films like after Hours, Nobody's Fool, and Desperately Seeking Susan, for which she won a British Academy Award. Rosanna was nominated for an Emmy for her work in The Executioner's Song. And Catherine Keener, a true original, has been nominated for an Oscar for her roles in Being John Malkovich and Capote. You saw her in The 40-Year-Old Virgin, you saw her in Get Out. <laughs> and she's currently starring with Jim Carrey in Kidding. Catherine is Lebanese, Scottish, and Cherokee. Come on up. Come on. Hey, hey. My climate buddies. It actually has happened, right? We talked about it in Big Sur, and here we are. Yeah, it was it was beautiful to see you uh, give birth to this. Am I staying up? Stay with me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're a family. Uh, you know, I, I would like to say that every human life is dependent on having and honoring honoring our planet. 
We breathe her air, we drink her water, we bask in her sunlight, yet we have violated and abused Mother Earth. We have ignored her cries for help. She too is a survivor and we must believe her. Women are innately connected to our planet's ability to grow and to give life. We recognize that and we have shared trauma that needs nurturing and healing. Mother Earth is me too. And it is our responsibility to listen and protect her by embracing natural solutions. And a planetary health diet. Leave fossil fuels in the ground. And restrict emissions. As an eco-feminist, I am dedicated to all the ways we can heal our planet. Okay. So, I think that um, Rachel O'Leary Carmona. Rachel is, is a first generation Mexican American who grew up in the north side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and she earned her associate's degree from Madison Area Technical College, her bachelor, bachelor's degree in African American studies from the University of Wisconsin, and her master's in public policy from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, where she focused on leadership development and nonprofit management. A recognized expert on building transformational online and offline communities and networks, Rachel has led leadership positions with Amnesty International, Women for Women International, Girl Scouts of the USA, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against, Against Defamation, Wisconsin Public Television, and with the mayor's offices in Memphis, Tennessee, and Somerville, Massachusetts. <laughs> Rachel currently serves as the Chief Operating Officer for Women's March. I wasn't expecting all that, y'all. <laughs> I will also share that I'm not a morning person and this is still morning for me. So I just want us to all shake it off right now. How y'all doing? I think you could do better than that. How y'all doing? I have high expectations and slippery fingers. <laughs> I will tell you that coming from Milwaukee, someone like me never expected to be on a stage like this with folks like this. 